What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we are going to be working with iOS. So in this tutorial I'm going to be covering how to download an image and display it in SwiftUI. Now I know that there are already tutorials and frameworks that cover this for you, but I want to actually go through the steps of doing this yourself and making it robust so that you can actually download an image using a URL or even possibly an image key. So if you're using some other SDK that is only working with image keys, I can actually show you how to implement that into our solution. So I'm going to be showing you that example with Amplify, but you can apply it to any third party framework or any SDK where you're only given an image key and you want to display that image in SwiftUI. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right on in. All right, so as you can see here, we already have some of this stuff set up. And if you want a link to the code, you can find it in the description below. The starter project and the finished project will be available through a repo. So if I show you the app, it's a pretty simple app. And as you can see right here, it's simply gonna show the key right now. I'm just showing the image path uh, of where we're gonna download this image. And then also what I'm gonna demonstrate is I want to be able to show more images from the same image path and make sure that we're caching that that image that we already downloaded so that we don't have to download it again right so let's go ahead and create a new file that's going to represent our remote image all right so we have our remote image right and two features that i want to have on this image are going to be able to actually display a placeholder right while the image is downloading so if the image can't be downloaded or it's still downloading, I want to show some type of placeholder image, but I also want to have the ability to download an image from a URL or possibly even an image key. So let's go ahead and update our remote image with those different properties right now. All right, so as you can see, we're gonna have a placeholder image, which is gonna be of type image. It's gonna be Swift UI image, right? And then we have this image downloader. Now, image downloader doesn't actually exist yet. We actually need to create that. And as opposed to creating like a class or a struct and make this a concrete object, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a protocol that's going to allow us to download the data for our image and then the implementation will essentially allow us to download that data and we don't really need to know anything about that download process in our image downloader. So let's start creating that protocol now. All right, so as you can see, we have this new protocol called image downloader, and that's gonna take care of the error that we had here before. And it's and it's only required to have this function in it right now that's called download image data. So as you can see, it's gonna have a completion handler, which means that we're able to implement this image downloader, and all it needs to really do is simply return some type of data in the completion handler. So once again, the logic that we implement doesn't really matter as long as we're conforming to this image downloader and as long as it gives us back that data we're all good to go so let's go ahead and create a default image downloader which is essentially going to take in an image path or a string and it's going to turn that into a url and then we can use url session to download that image All right, so as you can see, we have this default image downloader that conforms to image downloader. And I'm initializing this with the image path, which is going to be a string, right? And now we also have the download image data implemented, which is required by our image downloader protocol, right? And now we just go ahead and implement the functionality in order to get this data back. So let's go ahead and create a URL session, download that data and pass it back through the completion handler. All right, so as you can see, we're just gonna simply unwrap our URL from our image path, and then we're gonna pass it into a data task. If we have data, then we'll pass it back through the completion handler. And don't forget dot resume, right? Because none of us forget to ever do that, right? <laughs> Anyways, let's head back down to our remote image and let's go ahead and start filling this thing out. So what I wanna do is I need to also make sure that we have an actual image property that we can observe. So we're gonna display the placeholder image if we don't have the image yet, right? Like if there's no data or there's no UI image available, 
then we want to show the placeholder image. But if we do have the actual image, the UI image actually, then we want to show an actual image of what was downloaded. So let's go ahead and add that functionality in. All right, so we have our remote image and it's gonna have this state property called UI image, which is gonna be an optional UI image. That gives us the ability to check if it has a value. If it does, then we can create a Swift UI image out of it, right? And then if it doesn't, then we can just simply display the placeholder. Now, whenever I display the placeholder image, what I'll do for this implementation, just to make it simple, is every time that this appears, let me go ahead and try to download the image and see if I could get it back. If I wasn't able to get it before, I might be able to get it now. So I'm gonna do an on up here for our placeholder image, and then I'll trigger the download process from our image downloader. All right, so as you can see, we have the placeholder image doing on up here. We're gonna attempt to get the image, which is this function right here. And once again, we don't know the implementation of our image downloader. All we know is that it does have a function called download image data. We'll get that image data back. We're gonna check if it has a value and if it can be converted into a UI image. If it can't, then we'll just make sure that we set the UI image equal to nil, and that will make sure that our placeholder is continued to be shown. Now, if we can get that image, then we're just simply gonna update our self.ui image to the newly created image right here. So then we'll actually be able to see that downloaded image. So now what we need to do is head back over to, um, actually we need to go up here and update our initializer because we're not going to be able to just as simply initialize with the placeholder image and the image downloader. It's gonna be expecting that UI image. So let's update this initializer. All right, there we go. We have our initializer updated. Um, let's go back over to our content view and let's change this text to actually be the remote image. All right, now we have our remote image being created for each post that we have and we're gonna simply be displaying the placeholder image as a image with the system name of photo, very simple and generic. And then we have the image downloader, which is going to be using our default image downloader, which we can simply pass a image path to. And that's going to trigger the functionality of using URL session in order to download our image, right? So now let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. All right, and there we go, that's our image. Now it looks kind of funny. Um, let me just make sure that I update the aspect ratio. All right, so now I update the aspect ratio and the frame, let's run it again and hopefully it looks a little bit better this time. All right, so as you might've saw, it flashed to the photo and then it actually displayed the image. And this is like kind of a low quality image, which is why it's blurry. But anyways, that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now what I wanna do is I want to actually implement the cache because if we do get more images, what's gonna happen is, as you saw, it flashed to the photo, which means that it was downloading those images. And we don't wanna keep downloading the images if we've already downloaded them once. It's taking up too many resources. So let's head back over to our remote image and implement an actual cache for our image downloader, or not for the image downloader, but for the remote image. So let's implement a cache for that. And done. So we have our remote image cache, which is a subclass of NS cache. And we can see that we're specifying that the key is gonna be an NS string and a value can be a UI image. Now we're gonna be using NS cache because it, I think it uses a LRU cache under the hood, which is essentially saying that we're going to make sure that we're caching things efficiently, but it also 
removes objects or images from the cache if we run into a memory error. So just keep that in mind that this is the reason why we're using this as opposed to a dictionary. Now we have two functions that we implemented here. We want to be able to cache an image whenever we have an image, right? Whenever we get that image downloaded and create a UI image, we'll cache it. And we'll also specify the key that we're going to be caching it with. So um, for the default image downloader, it's going to be the URL. That will be the key. And we'll set the object to the image, right? We'll set the object, which is going to be the image. And then the key is going to be the key as an NS string. So just make sure that you pass it as NS string or else you can't just work with the Swift string. Uh, in regards to retrieving that image, we're going to be working with this function right here, which is get image for the key. Once again, the image URL we're going to pass in right here, and then we'll be able to look up that image and return it if it exists. So that's why it's going to be an optional UI image. Now, in order to make this work nicely with the rest of our, um, our remote image and the image downloader, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a cache key um, that's provided by our image downloader so that we can um, work with that. So it may be an image path, but we want to keep the naming convention to be consistent. So let's go ahead and add in a property for our image downloader that's going to be called cache key. All right, so now we have this cache key and our, de our default image downloader doesn't conform to it anymore. So let's go ahead and make sure that it does conform to it by implementing cache key, which is simply going to return the image path for this one. So there we go. We're all set. Those were the only changes that we needed. And now what we can do since our image downloader also has a cache key, we can attempt to pull the image from our image cache. Now, one thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we're constantly working with the same image cache. You can do this any number of ways, but based off of all the frameworks that I've worked with in the past that do remote image caching, they're essentially working with a singleton under the hood. And we're going to do the same thing here. So in our remote image cache, let's go ahead and make it a singleton. All right, so that's all we need to do. Just this one line of code will allow us to work with a singleton. Now, if you want to be able to like pass different caches around, then you could still do that with this implementation. You don't have to necessarily leave uh, use the shared. Um, as you can see, I didn't make the initializer private. So depending on however you want to implement it, that'll work. But let's go ahead and go down. And now in our get image function on our remote image view, what we're going to do is we're going to check the cache to see if that UI image exists first. If it does, then we can simply update uh, this property, the UI image, the state property with that UI image. But if it doesn't, then we're going to kick off this whole entire download process. All right, so as you can see, we're going to be working with our singleton of our remote image cache, and then we're going to call get image for the image downloader's cache key. And then um, what we'll do is we'll use that cached image and we'll, we'll update it. Now, I wanted to make sure that we're printing this stuff out so that we can actually see when we're using a cached image versus when we're downloading that image. Now, as you can see here uh, in the else statement, we are still doing the same exact thing as before. But what we need to make sure that we do is we need to update our singleton remote image cache with the newly created UI image right here so that we're actually going to be able to pull from here once it's been downloaded and created. All right, so there we go. Now we're just simply caching that image for the cache key. And just to make sure that nothing weird happens during the networking request, which it shouldn't because we're working with a struct, I'm just going to make sure that we have the cache key up here so everything stays consistent. All right, so a little change right there. So we just want to make sure that we're working with the same cache key even after the download happens. So cache key right here, cache key right there, and then caching the UI image for that cache key. So let's go ahead and run it again. We should be all set to actually start working with the cached image. As you can see, we downloaded the image right here, right? And now when I go back to the similar and I get simulator and get more images, we're going to see that everything appears immediately. There was no flash of the placeholder image, and it's also showing that we're using that cached image, 
which is exactly what we wanted, right? And if we scroll down, we're continuing to use that cached image. So everything looks like it's working and everything's perfect. If you're only working with image URLs and like image paths and things like that, then you're all set to go. You don't even need to follow along any further. But if you are gonna be using some type of SDK where you're gonna be downloading um, images using an image key, then this is where we're gonna actually start implementing it. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to create a new concrete class of our image downloader. And this is gonna be for whatever service you're gonna be using. I'm using AWS Amplify, but you could be using any number of services to um, that store your images and download them from a key. So let's go ahead and create a new file for that. All right, so as you can see, I'm calling mine Amplify Image Downloader and it's gonna to conform to Image Downloader and we could just go ahead and hit this red button and do fix and now we have everything in here that we need in order to get going. So what I wanna do is first I wanna update the initializer so that we can just initialize it with a key. All right, so now we're gonna have our cache key whenever we create an instance of this image downloader, right? And for the implementation, it's just gonna depend on whatever framework that you're working with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually use Amplify to download the image. So this is where I'm gonna import my framework and then start using its download method. All right, so with Amplify, it's pretty simple and straightforward. We just need to do storage.downloaddata. We're gonna pass in a key, which is gonna be our, our cache key, right? And then in the result, we're just simply going to try to unwrap this image data, and then we'll pass what whether it's nil or not, because it could be an optional data, right? Optional data, optional data. We're just gonna pass that through th the completion. Now we're pretty much all set to actually work with an Amplify image downloader as opposed to using our old image downloader, our default image downloader. So back over here in the content view, we can swap this default image downloader out. All right, and there we go. We have an Amplify image downloader and we're passing a string to it. In this case, I'm just gonna still be working with the image path even though that won't work. I actually need to go back and update this or create a new instance of a post in order for this to work. So instead of image path, we're gonna actually wanna just call it like image key just to keep things kind of consistent. So I'll just update everything to make sure that it's working with a key. All right, so just so that our names kind of match and everything makes sense, we're gonna have an image key instead of an image path. And we'll still just keep this like this, this is fine, but um, I wanna work with my Amplify image downloader instead. And now what I wanna do is I wanna pass the image key to it. And instead of working with just five posts that are created like this, let's go ahead and download the images from our bucket and display those. All right, so now you can see I updated the get more images to work with this amplify service.getkeys method that I implemented before we all started everything. So if you wanna take a look at it right here, it's just specifically to amplify. I'm making sure that you know I sign in because amplify is a secure service. You need to be signed in in order to access these um, these photos. And then I just simply implement the get image, the get image keys right here, just so that everything's simple. But you know, amplify, implement whatever you're working with, however you want. But essentially I'm just getting back all the image keys and then for each image key, I'm creating a new post and that's gonna create an array of posts for me. And then I'm gonna update our self.posts to be displayed in here. Now I'll also set this to an empty post array as well, just so that we can, just so that we can uh, make sure that everything is going to uh, work as expected because we're not gonna be using a image URL right here. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and let's see if we're able to get back all of our images. So right now nothing's showing because we're working with an empty array, but if I do get images, I get the list and now we can see that they're downloaded and they're just being pulled from my bucket and as you can see, they're being downloaded. So that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show you. So this is more of a robust implementation, something that might work across projects. It's it's strongly uh, modeled after Kingfisher. So if you wanna go ahead and check them out, if you're too lazy to implement all this yourself, then feel free to check out Kingfisher. But 
I personally like to try to work with um, as few dependencies as possible and just knowing how to implement an image downloader and a remote image view, um, you know, is going to be helpful for people that are like me that want to code everything up themselves. So that's going to be it for today. I hope that you liked the video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions on topics that you want me to cover, leave them in the comments down below. And of course, of course, make sure that you go out there and you keep coding passionately.